perhaps one of the most sensational and unusual cases of modern times in the Far East reached its conclusion on November 2, 2001 when Mazna Ismail, her husband MOHD Alfandi Abdulrahman and their 31-year-old helper, her Amy Hassan, were hanged at Malaysia's Kajang prison on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. Mazna was better known as Mona Fonde, which was her stage name when she performed as a pop singer and water ballet dancer in her younger days. Mazna Ismail was born on the 1st of January 1956. In Nur Mazna binti Ismail Kanger, Perlis, Federation of Malaya. In July 1993, an assembly man for Central Pahang State. Datuk Maslan Idris, had approached Mona for supernatural help to boost his political career and climb the party ladder. He was persuaded by the couple to take part in a ritual in which he was to lay on the floor with his eyes closed waiting for the money to fall from the sky. No money fell, instead it was the blade of an axe. Adris was decapitated and then dismembered and partially skinned. His body was found cut up into 18 parts and buried in a hole near Mona's home in the state of Pahang, about 130 kilometers northeast of Kuala Lumpur. Maslin was reported missing on July 2, 1993 after he had withdrawn 30,000 ringgit then 12,000 US dollars from a Kuala Lumpur bank. The day after the killing, Mona went on a shopping spree in Kuala Lumpur, and later bought herself a Mercedes-Benz and had a facelift. When questioned Jeremy made a statement to the police which led to the discovery of Maslin's remains. Unsurprisingly Mona and husband immediately became the prime suspects. Mona, Alfandi and Jeremy were tried before a judge Datuk Mokhtar Sidon sitting in the Temer Low High Court in 1995, charged with murder under Section 302 of the Malaysian Penal Code, a crime which carries a mandatory death sentence. The trial was a media sensation. Mona and Alfandi were an attractive couple in their late thirties accused of a gruesome Udu related murder. Mona had a penchant for wearing expensive outfits to court each day. Unlike most people on trial for her life she always had a smile for the media and seemed to revel in the attention. The case lasted 65 days and heard evidence from 76 witnesses. The prosecution told the court that money was the motive for the killing and pointed to the shopping spree, the facelift and the Mercedes. Your Amy testified against Mona and Alfandi and revealed the gruesome details of the murder. It was alleged by the prosecution that Maslin had been killed between 10 p.m. on July 2nd and 12 midnight on July 18, 1993, in Kampung Peru's Aludong, Robin Pahang State. His body was found on July 22nd, 1993, buried 1.8 meters beneath the storeroom of an uncompleted house and sealed over with a concrete cap. Alfandi, in his defense, said Maslin owed him 2 million ringgit, $526,000 for a magic cane talisman and a traditional hat said to have belonged to former Indonesian President Sukarno. Mona testified that she also gave talismans and charms to several other UMNO politicians to boost their popularity with the electorate. It only took the seven-member jury just 70 minutes to reach a unanimous verdict of guilty against all three defendants. Afandi and Mona smiled when the foreman of the jury delivered the verdict on the 9th of February 1995. Gurlam Mustafa Ali Khan, who represented Mona and Alfandi, was invited to offer mitigation 
but declined and said they would be lodging an appeal. Your Amy's counsel, Karpal Singh, told the court that his client was only 24, unemployed and of low intelligence. The judge then asked them if they had anything to say before he passed sentence, and Alfandi and Mona replied that they would leave to the discretion of the court. He then passed the death sentence on each of them, that they be taken from court to a recognized prison and later be hanged till they were dead. After hearing her sentence Mona said I am happy and thank you to all Malaysians. She was photographed smiling as usual as she was led from the court to prison. Their appeals were heard by the Chief Justice of the Federal Court, Janam O.H.D. Yusuf Chin, the Chief Judge of Malaya, Datuk Wan Adnan Wan Ismail and Federal Court Judge Datuk Dr. Zakaria Yadam in the Federal Court, Malaysia's highest court sitting in Kuala Lumpur. The appeal process had started in June of 1998, but then had been adjourned until 1999 after legal arguments on the admissibility of your Amy's statement to the police which led to the discovery of Maslin's body. On the 13th of April 1999 all three appeals were dismissed and the death sentences upheld. In April 2001 the pardons board turned down their pleas for clemency leaving the way clear for their executions. The hangings were set for dawn on Friday 2nd of November 2001 in Kajang prison. On the previous day Mona and Alfandi were allowed an 8 hour visit with about a dozen members of their families. It was reported that they spent their last hours advising their children from both their own marriage and their previous marriages to grow up to be good people and also told their children, Yagadiri Bake Bake. A senior prisons officer had said there was a lot of crying and hugging as they spoke to their children and family for the last time. It was also reported that Mona had said she would never die just before she was executed. It is not known what she meant by that. It is normal practice in Malaysia for condemned prisoners to be given the food of their choice for their last meal, however this offer was declined. Apparently, according to prison sources they were very calm saying very little and requesting nothing in their last hours. Before dawn on the Friday morning the trio were each handcuffed and hooded in their holding cells adjacent to the execution chamber and then led to the gallows with its three British-style nooses dangling from the metal beam. On the trap their legs were strapped and the noses adjusted round their necks. At 5.59 a.m. the drop fell and the three of them plummeted down. The execution would have been witnessed by a small number of guards and officials and the prison doctor. The press and the general public are excluded. One official told the afternoon Malay Mail newspaper that they expressed no repentance at the end. They didn't say anything, they were calm just like those who accept that they are going to die. The executions were formally announced later in the morning by a spokesman for Malaysian Prisons Department. Jamil Razif Kassim told reporters all three have undergone their sentence as of this morning. The bodies were left hanging for an hour before being taken down for autopsy and then burial. Mona and Alfandi were buried in a cemetery in Kajang later in the morning, while your Amy was buried in his hometown of Port Klang, in the Talakgong Muslim Cemetery that afternoon. Mona Fonda gained more notoriety than she had been when she was still a pop singer. There was wide local and even international media coverage and plenty of public interest anti-death penalty movements including Amnesty International voiced their opposition to the execution of the trio. Thank you for watching Death Row.